here in this video, we will discuss what is affecting equity markets today. Largely, your major indexes are trading lower following economic data reports, in which it was really mixed across the board. Durable goods orders month over month missed markets expectations of a half of 1%, actually coming in at 0.2%. So that was a pretty big disappointment. GDP growth rate quarter over quarter, second estimate for Q3, came in line with expectations at 2.8% versus 3% for the prior reading. Initial jobless claims surprised to the downside, coming in at 213,000. Expectation was around 216,000. So a little bit of Good news there. Chicago PMI, surprise to the downside, coming in at 40.2. Expectation was 44. Last month was 41.6. So a month over month contraction and uh, missing expectations by quite a bit. Personal income month over month came in at 0.6% versus expectations of 0.3%. So that really came in better than expected. Personal spending month over month came in slightly better as well, coming in at 0.4%. Expectation was 0.3%. And last month, we got revised higher from 0.5% up to 0.6%. So across the board, really mixed data. Now, core PCE price index month over month came in at 0.3%. Last month, you were at 0.3%, and the expectation was 0.3%. But it was actually a little bit better than it expected. Core PCE month over month was 0.27% in October. Forecasters like your major banks, Moody's, Namara, Pantheon Macroeconomics, Barclays, City, Deutsche Bank, Goldman Sachs, Federal Reserve Board, all, all of your forecasters, on average, were expecting core PCE at 0.28%. So you actually came in slightly lower than expected for your core month over month reading, just slightly, not enough to get people excited, but it was still a little bit better than expected. Now, the 12 month rate rose to 2.8% from 2.7% in September, and the six month annualized rate held at 2.3%, and the three month rate was 2.8% versus 2.4% in September. So you are starting to get CPI or PCE, I should say, starting to rise again. Now, I'm personally not concerned about this recent rise in inflation because a lot of it has to do with shelter. And we just heard from Redfin CEO that said, you're probably going to get shelter inflation that actually falls next year. And I think with even the threat of lower government spending, you're going to see inflation likely come down more than expected in 2025 now this could really fuel the markets higher because at this point we're only expecting two to three cuts next year from the fed and if inflation starts to come in lower than expected potentially even undershooting two percent you're gonna see uh five six cuts probably next year and that's gonna boost some risk on activity of course unless we go into a recession and that's very risk off but you would get more like 10 or 15 cuts next year, right? So it's kind of a bit of a trade-off. I personally don't think the likelihood of a recession is, is higher than soft landing, although we won't know uh, if we're going to have a soft landing until probably mid-next year. So it's still an open-ended question, but at this point, the economy looks like it's doing okay. As Elon Musk says on X, government overspending is what creates inflation. We need to make that link crystal clear to the American people. SPX is up on Monday and Tuesday before Turkey Day. Buy on Tuesday's close and sell on Friday's close. Collect your profit, 94% of occurrences. One loss, which was in 1987, which was actually foreshadowed by NS NYSE AD line back then. And unlike nys e line uh, ad line confirming highs today so basically saying that you know historically this is a pretty bullish period in time and 
we'll likely expect to see that throughout the end of this year as well. Now, Mark Newton, head of technical strategy over at Funstrat, says Breath has certainly shown a minor rebound in the last week, despite the underperformance in large cap tech. As many know, QQQ is diverging from SPX at highs. The percentage of XPX members within 20% of 12-month highs has been trending down since October. All of your major indexes are red today. The Nasdaq down 0.66%, S&P down 0.35%, the Dow is down a quarter of 1%. The Russell is the only index that is, is actually in the green at the time of recording this video is up 0.15%. The VIX is up about 3% today. This is really the risk that I highlighted in the video last night that as markets are doing well and really pricing in a you know best case scenario for 2025 with with very little downside surprises priced in if if and when you get these big data points if they're not as good as expected it turns into a negative catalyst for markets that can be amplified by all of the bullish positioning in markets and that's what you're seeing today with the data that came in on the weaker side for some metrics of our economy, like durable goods orders, for an example, you do see kind of a knee jerk downward reaction in equities and a little bit of that 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 risk off kind of positioning. And that's what's happening. You can also see this reflected in 10 year treasury yields. 10 year treasury yields are down almost seven basis points points today to 4.234 percent not because inflation surprised to the downside it did barely but because the economy surprised a little bit to the downside you know which is not exactly great for the bull thesis for next year now i don't think this data today really takes away that bull thesis but when you are stretched as far as equity positioning, when your your price targets for next year are coming in 10 to 20 percent higher for the S&P, you're vulnerable. That's that's just it. You're vulnerable for that downside surprise. Now, Gillaharm Tavers on X says the current scenario for equities stretch valuations, according to Schiller PEs, tight credit spreads and the largest allocation to equities by small speculators. The sum of their percentiles has reached extreme levels. If you look at the CAPE ratio plus credit spreads, credit spreads plus small speculators equity positioning, you are at the highest levels you have seen um, ever, uh, really, in, in the grand scope of things. You're at more stretch levels than even, you know, 1999. Um, from from that perspective so yeah you're vulnerable does this mean the party ends not necessarily but you are vulnerable namara's charlie mcgilliam says equity positioning is still very low with 70 percent of gamma set to expire this friday with a potential for an outsized day one to two day move that is elevated with dealers and market makers long at the money gamma to the tune of 10 billion dollars per one percent move so basically in the options market people are uh positioned for the upside for every one percent move you have 10 billion dollars on the line so this does suggest you could see a pretty violent upwards move over the coming days and at the same time it looks like corporate insiders are dumping shares at the fastest pace in at least the last two decades and here is goldman's selected investment ideas broader participation you have the equal way s p 500 s p 400 mid caps us ai phase three ai enabled revenues think like a tesla with a robo taxi network next year something like that and global etcs excluding tech compounders so they really don't care for the tech trade for next year now take a listen to ed yardini which has the highest s p 500 price target for next year which is seven thousand, and what he just said about markets on cnbc today markets this morning joining us right now is ed yardini he's the president of yardini research and ed you are joining us on a morning where we have seen new highs once again for both the dow right. and the s p 500 uh what do you think of this rally that we're on uh what kind of legs does it have and what would you tell people in terms of where they should invest right now well i think they should stay invested it's hard to tell somebody who's been in cash 
to get into this market right now. Things are not exactly cheap, uh, but clearly uh, those who are uh, getting into the market are going into the small and mid-cap stocks, which have been relatively cheap, and that's that's fine. And then uh, I think people are also going into the S&P 493, um, which are cheaper than the Magnificent Seven. Uh, but all in all, I would stay invested. The outlook uh, remains uh, fairly upbeat. Clearly, there's risks out there, but the economy has proven itself to be remarkably resilient. Uh, I think interest rates have normalized. I don't think the Fed really needs to lower interest rates. And meanwhile, um, the uh, outlook, uh, I think, uh, is going to be somewhat bumpy with regards to issues of of tariffs, but uh, tax cuts and deregulation should be good for earnings. So the entire idea of, you know, the don't fight the Fed if the Fed right. is continuing to cut rates, that has been one thing that has driven this market. You, you think right. the baton's been handed off at this point to maybe a more business-friendly administration that's coming in and the idea that corporations are going to be able to continue uh, to earn pretty significant amounts of money. Uh, absolutely. And not only that, I think that we are uh, still in the early stages of a productivity boom, uh, productivity really was extremely low back in 2015. It was almost down to zero. And uh, we've seen it go from 0.5% to about 2%. So we've seen a quadrupling of productivity since 2015. And I think productivity growth can uh, go up to 3 to 4%, which sounds delusional, but the reality is we've had productivity booms in the past, in the 60s, in the 90s, and they also show productivity going to three to four percent and this productivity boom probably has more going for it because the technologies that are out there lend themselves to being used by many more business uh, kind of applications than we had even in the 1990s you, do you think this is entirely AI driven or I mean we're still pretty early in the AI right. run on things right no, um, you know, uh, Becky, we've been calling this the uh, Roaring 2020s since the beginning of the decade, and so far, so good. And uh, it uh, wasn't based just on AI. It was based on uh, uh, cloud computing. It was based on automation, robotics. Uh, there's there's a lot of moving parts here on the technology revolution, and they're all co coming together. But, but I think the key driver is a, a shortage of skilled labor, and technology is able to augment the productivity of uh, workers uh, that allows for wages to rise faster than prices, which is actually what's been happening for the past year and a half. Uh, so all in all, I think uh, productivity is really the story uh, that's uh, driven the economy so far during the roaring 2020s. And I think it'll continue to do so up ahead here. And I think deregulation helps, tax cuts help. Uh, we'll see where the tariffs go. They, they could be that bump in the road uh, along the way, but I think we're heading to 7,000 on the S&P 500 by the wow. end of next year, 8,000 wow. by the end. Well, you know, um, 7,000 to 6,000 is, uh, is is doable, in, in, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, and then 10,000 by the end of the um, uh, of the decade. So uh, that's that's my Thanksgiving uh, gift uh, to you all. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll take a, a prediction like that as we head into the holiday. Um, right. Ed, the, you're the second person in, in an hour who's told us that we should be looking at the other 493 stocks. Peter Bookvar was on with us earlier saying the same yep. thing. Uh, how hard is it to find bargains there? I mean, it, it seems like a pretty mm -hmm. common mantra that people have been saying for a little yeah. while now. Look at those other 493. Well, I... I guess my view is every when you look at your portfolio, think of every company as a technology company. They either make it or they use it. If they don't use it, they're, they're going to be a competitive disadvantage. And so I think there's a tremendous amount of pressure to use technology. And um, it's not just pressure. I mean, it, it pays off. And so I think there's still opportunities uh, in technology, believe it or not, and in communication services. But uh, in the in the rest of the market, I think financials are still uh, have opportunities, uh, industrials, uh, consumer discretionary. I, I think there's some clunkers like healthcare is going to be challenged by uh, RFK and uh, doc Dr. Oz. We'll see how, how that plays out. And materials and energy are being challenged by uh, a fundamentally weak uh, outlook for the Chinese economy as well as the European economy. The percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average is currently at 63.5%. You do have almost 1% of stocks today falling below their 50-day moving average, but overall, you're sitting at healthy levels. And, I mean, 
you're only at 63 and a half percent like heading into 2023 we were at 85 percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average if anyone says this you know year-end rally is played out that it's not going to happen there's no santa claus rally i think that's delusional because under the surface yes there is some strength but a little over a coin toss worth of stocks are above their 50-day moving average like your 50-day moving average is is not you know uh, too crazy right that's just the average of the last 50 days i mean you could get to 85 90 percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average that's a true you know rally internally for markets and i think ed yardini i'm in agreement with with him on that right you want to look at the other areas of our markets those areas those are going to be the areas that outperform. The CNN Fear and Greed Index is sitting at 64 today, unchanged from yesterday, with market momentum that is extreme greed. Stock price strength is neutral. Stock price breadth is fear. Put in call options, extreme greed. Market volatility, neutral. Safe haven demand, extreme greed. And junk bond demand in greed. Sentiment for the SPY today is bullish at 63. Yesterday was bearish at 26. So definitely seeing some bulls coming back to life here. Message volume is high at 58. Yesterday was high at 59. And the participation ratio is normal at 53. Now, keep in mind as well, today is a very low volume day. You've only had about 19.8 million shares trading hands versus yesterday, you even had 45 and a half million shares trading hands for the SPY. You will likely get more, you know, activity coming into markets, not even on Friday. Friday's a half day. But the following week, that's where things could get pretty exciting to the upside. Now, as you guys know, low volume tends to lead to more downside price action, right? Just like a stock that goes through a large rally, you tend to get volume that spikes. And when volume peaks out and falls is when the stock price tends to fall. Same can be true for broader markets. When you get volume that comes in and volume rises, that can tend to lead to prices going higher. When volume subsides and you get low volume days after previously seeing high volume, that can lead to those downside moves. And I think that's part of what you are seeing today. But from this perspective, a year end rally looks likely into a Q1 correction for markets, mainly based on scary tariff policies but that's to be continued so let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you in the next one